Hi guys, it's Ben here. How are you all doing? The final weekend before the Champions League final is just concluding. Now we've had to sit through everyone else's games, everyone else's cup finals, the other league seasons in Spain and Italy, whatever, are just finishing off now. We've had to kind of sit on our hands and just think about what's going to happen in Kiev next weekend. Um, the FA Cup final just took place yesterday. Um, Man United failed to win that, which was quite nice to see. There's been other stuff going on. There's been some good sporting action all around, but Obviously, we're focusing on next Saturday. It's too early for me to do a preview for that because anything can happen in the meantime. So, I, th you know, I, th I thought I'd do a transfer video. Um, I I've done a couple of these already uh, in the last few weeks, but um, there's been a bit of news recently, um, so I thought I'd get my teeth into a bit of it before we look ahead properly to Saturday's cup final in Kiev. Um, now, some of you <laughs> get quite annoyed when people, well, when I make transfer videos, um, when we've got a big game like this on the horizon. I've seen people on Twitter moaning about people posting transfer stories and stuff and even talking about it at this stage. People just saying, focus on Kiev and then we'll get out of the way. And you know, I agree to an extent. Um, the Kiev is, the, uh, is obviously the focus, but we, we, some of us just cannot help but get our teeth stuck into some of these stories that are flowing around. Um, you know, with the Premier League season being over, I'm kind of thinking already, can we challenge Man City for the title next season? Um, and you obviously have to think about the players that are going to come in to help us do that. Naby Keita will be in. Um, his Bundesliga campaign finished last week, so um, yeah, we're in a position now where we can start thinking about putting the pieces together. Now, the main one um, that Liverpool fans, I, I think, are getting excited about right now, and I'm certainly getting excited about, is Nabil Fakir of Lyon. Now, I've got a thing kind of in front of me here um, about this. He's had his best ever season for Lyon in terms of goals. 23 goals in 40 appearances overall, so that's sort of even better than what Salah posted for Roma in his final season there. Um, they are different players. I think, you know, Fakir can play wide or he can play attacking midfield, so, you know, you kind of can't help but draw comparisons to Coutinho there. Um, they're both flair players, they've both got great skills and can shoot from distance and have a lot of um, a lot of that sort of stuff in their arsenal, whereas Salah, I guess when, when, when you first thought of him, um, you just thought he was very direct, quick, um, got in behind, good finisher. Uh, he, he obviously turned out to be so much more than that, but Fakir feels like more of a Coutinho replacement. Um, I wasn't sure when Coutinho was sold if Klopp just didn't see that type of player as fitting into his system because we knew Cater was coming in and he can get forward, he's more of a box-to-box. -box. Oxlade Chamberlain is a bit like that as well. Um, I thought he might see himself going with just pure energy in midfield, um, Henderson or, or, or a six and the two energetic attacking midfielders in front of him and then your, your three, Mane, Firmino, Salah or you know equivalent uh, in front of that. But Fakir kind of sits in the more Coutinho mould so maybe there is still room for that kind of player in Klopp's um, side. Now the, the, the Echo and all the other sort of Merseyside based reporters have kind of shot this story down. It's very, very early days. It's all French media so far and um, God love them, the ITKs. Um, but I mean French media, I mean Canal Plus have, have gone as far as saying it's 99% done. Um, Fakir was interviewed and, you know, he wasn't giving much away. He said, it's been four years since I've been pro and it's one of my greatest joys, talking about finishing third. Um, did he feel like it was the end of the adventure? He said, maybe, maybe, and as I told you, this game was very important to me. And there's been some footage during the rounds um, on Twitter of him sort of clapping the fans. And the consensus was that they kind of knew it was a goodbye. We don't know. The, the, now the bookmakers, I cannot help but look at the bookmakers all the time. I probably shouldn't because we've been through this last year or last season with Thomas Lamar. Um, even in January, various things. I mean, Van Dijk was long, long odds on to join us in the summer. It didn't happen. Same with Lamar. Um, now, Fakir, if you look at all of the odds on Skybet, Fakir to Liverpool is, is the joint most certain uh, transfer at the moment for, the, for this summer to join Liverpool. He's 6 to 1 on. Um, so for those who don't understand betting, you put £6 on him to join Liverpool, you win £1. They think it's that certain. Make of that what you will. The, as I say, the Liverpool journalist uh, don't think there's anything in it yet. I remember a few weeks ago, just after the Chelsea game, it was RMC Sport that was saying that uh, a deal had been struck between the two clubs. Um, Canal Plus have gone with that as well. Le Queep as well said that Chelsea might be interested too. So. It's very much in the air, but look, I, th I think there is reason to think there is something in this. 
and if I mean it makes perfect sense. Uh, his numbers have been gradually, gradually getting better, as were Salah's. So it's very similar age, very similar kind of blueprint, um, similar stature. I guess the fee will be a bit more than what Salah was. I think you're talking probably 50 to 60 million pounds for Fakir. Um, but Liverpool have shown that if, if it's the right player, then they're willing to do that. Uh, a player in a similar position to Fakir is Ousmane Dembele. Now, again, I've got it in front of me here. Guillaume Balaguer's kind of spoken out about this situation. Now, obviously, Dembele, one of the world's most expensive players of all time. We know Klopp likes him. He tried to get him when he was at Rennes. He ended up going to Dortmund, the Klopp's old club, and then he, uh, he wasn't there for long before going to Barcelona. Um, so Balaguer says, in regards to a loan, his understanding of a situation is they will let him go on loan. Um, he says, right now, who is going to pay 100 million euros for him anyway? I said they will, as I said, they will let him go on loan though. At first they thought he's advancing well, but now they realise he needs to get minutes and he won't if Antoine Griezmann arrives. Surely it's about time Griezmann uh, finally got his move. Um, that, that's me saying that. And they're waiting to see if Griezmann gets confirmed and if that's the case, they're looking at the possibility of letting him go on loan. So, fingers crossed on that one, I suppose. I mean, Dembele is a wonderful player. Barcelona playing right now. Um, I'm just catching a bit of it and he, he's just, he's so perfect for us. Um, Again, he can play anywhere in that kind of front three, four, um, pace, skill, um, good for goals, just, you know, the, the obvious stuff, uh, the absolute elite, most consistent level. Um, hasn't quite happened for him at Barcelona, mainly down to injuries and obviously a lot of competition for places, but at Liverpool, I guess it'd be a similar scenario of competition, but... Um, well, I mean, what, what, what an option that would be. And there's, there's, there's no denying we need at least one option, and I'd love to get two. If we can get Fakir and Dembele, um, then that would just be, you know, that's, that's absolute dreamland, and I think we've got the best attack in, in the league, or even, you know, even in Europe, if, if we don't already. We certainly will want to have all those options. Uh, another player in that mould, or sort of in that same position, is... Anderson Taliska, now he's been at Besiktas for a couple of years on loan from Benfica. Um, he's been linked with Man United quite heavily. Um, Besiktas boss Sunel Gunes, sorry if that's pronounced wrong, uh, has said that he's agreed to move to his next club. Uh, he says, Taliska has already gone at the winter break. I'm sorry that he won't be with us any longer. I wish he could stay for his sake and ours. He already had a deal in place. He might be rivals with Cenk Tossen. Now, um, that's all there is. That that is all we've got to go off here. We don't. We haven't really heard of anything to do um, with Taliska as far as Liverpool links are concerned. It's been a long, long-term target for Man United in the reports. So, how much do you want to really, you know, would, would how much does the Besiktas boss even know about the rivalries in the Premier League? Um, obviously, Cenk Tosin is a former Besiktas player, so. He's obviously at the forefront of his mind when it comes to Premier League. Um, so maybe he's just indicating that he's going to move to the Premier League. Um, I've never seen the guy play. So yeah, that's kind of all there is to that. And I, I, as I'm just kind of, as I touched on earlier, Jack Butler looks like it's very likely to happen. Uh, Mignolet unhappy with not being number one at Liverpool anymore. He'll obviously leave. Um, and Butler getting relegated with Stoke. He obviously wants to come back to Premier League. Now my only thing on that is... Butler's not going to be first choice at Liverpool, or, or he's not going to be guaranteed first choice, so would it make sense for him to do that? Um, having said that, all of the other top six clubs or, you know, have got keepers that are better than Butland, with the exception maybe of Arsenal. Arsenal seems like a great fit for him, to be honest. Um, Czech's been on the way out for years, Ospina's not good enough. Um, Arsenal obviously going to have a new manager, new regime, anything can happen over there. I feel like Button would be a good signing for them. I'm not convinced that he'd be first choice at Liverpool and he definitely wouldn't be first choice at City, at United or, or Spurs. You know, So we'll see on that. Uh, and the other one was Jorginho, who, uh, the, the Napoli midfielder who's been linked with us. He is 6-1 to, to join Man City and he's long odds on, uh, sorry, long odds to join Liverpool. So um, if, you, if you believe the bookies, uh, you know, then City, who we know are interested, look like they're they're going to be able to uh, to pull him in. That would leave us with op other options. Ruben Neves obviously has been spoken about. All of these things we'll speak about during the summer, um, and I'll be better prepared for all of it once I've got Kiev out of the way and that off my mind. I'm going to preview that obviously during the week, and I'll be back with any transfer updates should there be any big ones between now and then. Um, but yeah, for now, 
that's the transfer news. Nabil Fakir is the most exciting one and seemingly the most, well, the one everyone's talking about the most, uh, understandably so. Um, so let's hope that one comes off. Uh, leave a comment with your thoughts on what you want to see us improve on this summer and any videos you want me to make in terms of transfers because, you know, I have a lot of spare time between now and the start of next season. Obviously got the World Cup, which I'll obviously cover, but uh, yeah, transfers are going to be a big, big talking point once we get the Champions League out of the way. Uh, so yeah, subscribe for obviously all of that sort of stuff and Kiev vlogs, Kiev previews, reactions, reviews and everything. I mean, obviously I'm going to be, I'm going to be there and... Um, there'll be loads of content going out on my Instagram as well, so make sure you follow me there at Ben Might Say, Snapchat, Twitter and Facebook, all the same, and I'll see you next time.